Okay, this is the third part of chiaroscuro countenance. Uh, what you saw there a minute ago was compressed charcoal, not vine, but compressed charcoal. This is the compressed charcoal pencils. I would recommend the softer uh, version, uh, but you can use all three, the soft, medium, and hard. Uh, you just want to have some varieties of different hardnesses so that you can get darker versus lighter marks. You can see here uh, I'm making very fluid, uh, abrupt marks with my compressed charcoal. You can see it's much darker uh, than the vine charcoal that I used in part two. Uh, so we're getting a wider range of contrast. Uh, here you see me using a smaller eraser. So darker marks, smaller marks, lighter marks, lighter uh, erasing, um, smaller marks. Um, so it's really about moving from large, generous shapes to much more specific shapes. So all of the stuff that you were um, kind of tentative about when it came uh, down to loosening up, you can now uh, be relieved of. Uh, you aren't looking for the larger primary and secondary shapes. Now you're looking for secondary and tertiary shapes. So you can see how uh, I'm making you know, the ear more detailed, putting stuff like hair and the mustache, um, refining the shapes of the various forms, uh, like the lips. So we're moving on to smaller shapes. Notice I have a piece of paper there. I'm using that piece of paper to protect the drawing from smearing uh, and to protect my hand uh, from getting charcoal all over it. Uh, but again, I want you to notice that I'm not doing a lot of blending still. I'm not moving into the smallest shapes and I'm moving around the whole face. I'm not just sticking in one area. I'm working the whole page. I'm looking for darks everywhere. I'm looking for those secondary shapes everywhere. I'm moving back and forth between charcoal and pencil, um, but I'm still making very decisive marks. I'm not fidgeting or, uh, you know, uh, being very tentative. I'm making a mark, and that's the brow. I'm stepping back. I'm making a mark. That's the cranium. I'm making a mark. That's the shape of the cheek. And every time I make a mark, I step back and I look uh, a little bit uh, more intently at the details that I'm seeing. So I don't want you to think for a minute uh, that you're not paying attention uh, to what you're seeing, but you're being slow with what you're seeing. Uh, you're not over-focusing on one area. Um, you're looking, making a mark, moving to another area, making a mark. And there's a little blending in to soften some of those tones. Now, one of the things that we've talked about is that you're not going to really see a lot of blacks in the face other than the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Uh, maybe a little in the ear, maybe a little bit underneath the beard there. Uh, but for the most part, the skin tones themselves, the wrinkles, those are going to be mid-tones, not dark tones. Now, notice here, uh, you know, talking about detail, his beard is very wiry and fluffy. Um, I want you to notice that I'm not drawing individual hairs. Uh, I'm drawing uh, lots of um, marks that are more linear, uh, that stand for the streaks of tone that you see in his beard. And I don't mean streaks as in color. I mean, you know, his beard is all gray, but there are darker and lighter versions of gray, tonally speaking, in the beard. So that's what I'm dealing with. Notice I'm very conscious of that side plane of the face, the side plane of the lip. Um, notice how I'm saying, okay, the hair is going to be a greater pressure than uh, of with the compressed charcoal. Uh, the skin tones, I'm going to reduce the pressure. I'm not doing very much blending at all. I'm also concentrating on the outside of the form as much as I am on the inside. So I'm looking at uh, the drawing, uh, the photograph, and I'm squinting, and I'm saying, can I see that edge? 
If I can, I want to create contrast uh, from outside to inside the figure, positive, negative space. If I can't see the edge of the figure, then I want the background to be similar in tonality. So if there's a light side to the figure and I can't see that side very well, then the background needs to be light. If it's very visible and focused, then I would want to put dark behind the light in order to make it seem more focused. I've returned to the beard. So that's another good point. I'm, you know, starting on areas, then I'm moving away from areas, then I'm going back to areas. Uh, I'm not overworking any one area. You'll hear, hear that term in art a lot, overworking, and that means just spending too much time in one area. Now, it was at this point, I think, in the drawing process that I realized that the ear is misplaced. So I'm about to make a major change, which brings me to the point that you can make major changes even at this late stage, if you notice them. Hopefully you will. And you don't need to be afraid to make major changes. Charcoal is very forgiving in that way. So you just say, oh, that ear is wrong. I'm going to move it down. Now, where is it? Well, I start triangulating. Uh, from the eye to the edge of the ear, uh, and I see that it's almost directly across the top part of the eye, maybe a little bit lower um, than the eye. I had it way above, uh, and the lower part of the ear is, you know, a little bit lower than the nose if I triangulate. So, you know, I'm still measuring even at this phase. Notice I abandoned that, though, and decided, oh, I'll work in another area. I think I do this kind of subconsciously, but I think the reason I do it is to give myself some time to think. And there's always something to do. You know, you're never, you know, uh, at a loss for how to improve a drawing, even after it's done. But in the process itself, you want to continually change things, modify things. And, you know, once I discovered what I think would solve the problem of the ear, I get in there with my small eraser and I use that to create, you know, not an outline, but a tone, a shape tone or a tone shape uh, that positions the ear in the right place and gives me the light that I need. Uh, and fortunately, uh, it's not really starting over, it's just making an adjustment. And it may be a major adjustment or maybe a small adjustment. Returning back to putting some darker patches next to the lighter patches, some contour line, the earlobe's too small, make it a little bigger. I think the thing that I want you guys to recognize is you don't have to be so tight. You can um, do things very fluidly and very casually with a relaxed kind of attitude. Uh, the, the harder that you try, sometimes the worse it is. So try to be a little bit more forgiving with the drawing, a little bit more forgiving with yourself. And, um, you know, think of it like clay that you can, you know, pound back into a, a lump and, and reshape. It's, you don't have to start over with the drawing. I used to do that a lot, and I can only imagine how many um, good starts I threw away or crumpled up because I thought I had to get it right from the first And, you know, even with the eraser, I'm holding it way back so that I can see what my eraser is doing. Now, you'll notice some of these little areas I'm hatching in, like doing a little scribble with my pencil, and then I use my finger to blend it or to soften it. Like that. Now, one thing about the sclera or the whites of the eyes, very rarely, and probably never, uh, will you see white in the whites of the eyes. They're more gray. The highlights on the nose and the highlights in the eye itself are going to be more likely to give you a pure white tone than the sclera. So just know that going from, you know, 
where you are right now that that's not going to be um, an expectation. And if your photograph seems to show them as white, that's just another reason why working from a photograph's uh, set of values is going to be uh, really deceptive, honestly. Even the way that I blend, I, I just make a little mark, step back, make a little mark, step back. One of the things about uh, this particular image uh, that you're seeing, as far as my drawing is concerned, is it, I'm drawing with the camera at an angle um, to the drawing, so the proportions are going to seem somewhat skewed compared to um, the proportions of the photograph. I still think I'm making it a little skinnier than my model, but uh, it's not quite as skinny as it looks uh, in the recording of the drawing process because, again, I'm drawing that easel at an angle. You know, hair, you're very rarely going to be drawing individual hairs. It's more like you're drawing textures and clumps of light and shadow. So really squint and look for the shapes of the tracks of hair. T-R-A-C-T-S. Tracks of hair. You'll see lighter tracks, darker tracks. And just like when we were recording trajectories of the shapes of the face, and just like when we were um, working from the blurry photograph uh, in this particular case, uh, we're still looking for large, generous shapes before we even get into, you know, pores and eye dots and nose reflections and individual beard hairs. Those tend to not draw very, very much. They're little quick moves too, but they're quick moves that are informed by their surrounding larger quick moves and moderate sized quick moves. I also think his forehead is too big, so that's another change that I will make. All right, so these are going to be uh, due by the beginning of our next class. Um, you'll go ahead and upload them, uh, and we will talk about them when we next meet. So again, if you just take a look at this image, it's mostly finished. We've got a pretty good likeness. There's some tweaks to be made, but all the major details and textures are there. The background is worked on. Um, the face is worked on. I could probably use a little more detail on the clothes, but I want it to be up to this standard, full range of value, uh, ready to be talked about. See you next class.